Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about how do you connect to a database instance. So, to start with, uh, this is what we have uh, discussed in our last video. So, this is an abstract picture of a Oracle database server. And this is, uh, this is the instance and these are the database files. And then what we want to learn here in this video how do I connect like you know this is a database server and users needs to connect to the database server so what happens when we when a user wants to connect to a database server All right so before going to that let's try to draw another analogy let's say here is your friend and your friend wants to come to your house so what you need to so this is say this is a and this is B and here is B inside his house alright so A wants to come to B so what you need what A needs to know so that he can come to B the first thing is B's address okay the first thing is B's address and let's say this this house of B has only one door or one you know one way to enter right so that means B's door let's say you know or, or B's gate or whatever you can tell okay so he needs to know B's address he needs to know B's door and let's say B is living here and you know there are multiple houses or multiple rooms are there so exactly we need to know which room B exists okay and let's say that you know we have some kind of a mechanism where we need to understand this is A's friend that means some kind of password or some kind of keyword or something that only only if A matches with matches with that then A is allowed to get in exactly similar way database works what we have let's say this is our client and somewhere somewhere in the world we have our database server so from now onwards we are going to do a cylinder and that cylinder is basically oracle database server okay so somewhere in the world we have a database server and inside a database server we have an user let's say the user is scott okay so let's say user is scott and now how this client is going to connect to that scott the first thing client needs to know is the machine name where this database server is running machine name or the IP address IP address or machine name then second thing is needs to, needs to know what is the database name the third thing it needs to know what is the port number or equivalent thing in in our analogy is what is the door so what is the port number on which this database listener is listening we we'll just tell all these things in, in in couple of minutes so don't worry about what is a listener and all this thing okay so that means the port number and also like you know for example whenever your friend is coming to your house he can either come by a by a bike or can come by a bus or may come by a plane or whatever similarly we need to know what is the transport protocol from this machine to this machine and maybe TCP is the transport protocol right so if we know this thing then what we can do a client machine can connect the client machine from the client machine a client software and this client software may be your SQL plus or maybe your SQL developer or Toad or whatever okay once this things known what we need to feed all this information in a particular manner so that we can connect to here and that particular manner is a very weird string I'm going to show you one of them okay it's a very weird string and that weird string is going to look like this okay so in this example 
what I'm trying to do I'm trying to connect to a host name which is called ec2 dash some number dot dot subcompute dot amazon aws dot com okay and then my database name is xe so what I need to do I need to give the username password and then this string okay if I give this string then I can connect to from from this machine to this database server all right so instead of let's say for example it's not like you know we are just not going to connect only one time multiple users multiple clients are going to connect and so on so instead of writing the weird string again and again what we can do we can alias that weird string to a value called db or i can call it xyz pqr whatever i name so basically what essentially i am saying that i am essentially saying so basically imagine this is the address okay this is the complete address in a particular format because why we need a particular format because this client only understand that format okay so then what we do what we did we call this weird string a name and that name is called alias or this is something called tns alias okay so using tns alias what we are going to do we are going to connect i'm going to show you how we are going to do that before that let's first go to the machine so basically we are going to connect to this machine ec2 whatever okay so basically here is that machine ec2 ec279 west1 compute.amazonaws.com so what i want to show you is that this is a database server i am connected using my unix user id and password i have connected to that database server and before i want to go do something i just want to show you some something interesting if i do ps minus ef graph ORA. so basically we discussed about the background processes and these are the background processes actually okay so these are the background processes and also this is being consumed some memory that we, we are not we, we do not know how much but yeah it is consuming some memory and this is where your database is running at this moment let's do one thing let's count how many of such processes are right now so right now we have 38 number of processes running on this database server okay and now what I'm going to do I'm going to go to my machine in my machine I have my SQL plus so this is my client machine so in other words let's draw this thing so in this machine I am going to this is my client machine in this client machine I am going to start SQL plus and the one that you know this black machine black black and white thing this is a this is a telnet connection to the database server and the database server is somewhere here and I'm just connecting there and what I saw is that in this database server right now I have 38 number of processes running okay and then what I do I know that I have a user and the user name is demo it's not Scott I have, I have created already a user in this database server called demo and the password is demo so essentially what we are trying to do we are trying to connect from this SQL plus to this demo user and to connect that we started an SQL plus and SQL plus will ask me give the user name so therefore I give demo then demo the password then here is asking the host string the host string what you can do you can give this complete string from here to here okay that is an option but instead of giving that complete string what I did in my TNS names dot aura that's a particular file on which I define that this string is equivalent to a string called DB to an alias called DB so therefore is instead of giving this whole string I just give DB and I say okay 
so what is going on right now we are trying to connect so it's, it's so basically it's, it says that connected to to this right so basically what happened that when the moment I hit that enter in the SQL plus a connection started from this client machine to this database server so this is called a connection so now let's go and then check how many server processes are running now so it looks like there are actually should be it looks like there are 40 okay so essentially it was something 38 and then it become 40 so what happens you know, why there are two more processes coming up okay so then let's go back and then do an exit here let's go and check how many processes are there so it become 39 Okay. So then let's say like you know, so the moment I am exiting from my SQL plus one process is going down. The moment I am going to make a connection. So let's try to do again another connection. Demo. Demo DB. So it's going to be you know this is trying to connect and it's already connected now and let's check how many processes are there so become 40 so essentially what we are doing is whenever we are connecting from the client one process is coming up in the database server when we are going out that processes is gone so we need to see what is really happening okay so we need to see what is what is really happening in the in the background whenever we are connecting from our client we have one more process is coming up in the database server and when you are disconnecting from the client the process is going so to understand that let's try to see another analogy let's say here is an hotel okay so let's say this is an hotel and then let's say here is a person who wants to go to that hotel so whenever he this person go, wants to go to this hotel so what happens is that at the entrance there is a gatekeeper or so there is a gatekeeper who is basically taking this person and then he is basically in the, in, the, in the back what we have we have some receptionist receptionist 1 receptionist 2 and so on okay so whenever this person is going to this hotel so what is happening is a dead the gatekeeper he is fast in you know receiving this person and then he is saying that you know don't worry don't come to me anymore just directly instead of coming to me directly go to the R1, the receptionist one again another person is coming then what he is doing is you know first I go to the gatekeeper and then from the gatekeeper he the gatekeeper told me to go to the reception is number two and so on so this is exactly what is happening in the database also whenever we have a client request or the clients connect connects to a database server what happens is that there is a gatekeeper and that gatekeeper name is listener okay so so every client should go to the listener and then what the listener does listener creates a receptionist or in database language it is called a dedicated server okay so the listener is going to fork a dedicated server and then it will tell the client to connect to that dedicated server process directly okay and then this listener is there to receive the other users or other clients then say client number two comes this comes to faster listener and listener is going to create a dedicated a fork a dedicated server process and then the client can directly talk to the dedicated server so this is something what in our analogy we have the receptionist thing okay so if this is the case I just want to show you a better diagram so therefore in step one 
a client connection comes and then when the client connection comes here the listener is going to step to going to fork a dedicated server process and then the client is going to directly talk to the dedicated server and this is why each time you are starting a new client your your number of processes is increasing by one and whenever you are you are disconnecting or you are quitting in that case this dedicated server is also cleaned up by the listener or it, it is done by some other processes okay so what we have we have started our diagram with this and then this is what we reach now so he's in in the in the presence of a client comes to listener and then listener creates a dedicated server one so let's say this is client one so therefore this is dedicated server process one and then the listener so basically the client is going to directly talk to that dedicated server again we have client two comes so client two first time is go to listener the same thing that uh, that I told you step one it goes to the listener and listener forks of another dedicated server DS2 and then asks the client to connect directly to that dedicated server process okay so then dedicated dedicated server process can is attached can access the instance instance SGA and then you know dedicated server process can also you know basically the dix io and all these things can can come from the file to here so essentially this is what we have seen here is the revised picture okay and so basically the picture whatever we draw whatever we drew in the last video is now little bit we, we extend that where we have including a dedicated server and essentially this dedicated server is a workhorse process which does all sort of work for this client so after this client connect connected he is going to let's say this client is going to give select star from EMP okay then this dedicated server process is going to process all these commands on behalf of this client okay and this dedicated server process does a lot of thing okay so here is another another problem in our approach the problem here is that consider again that hotel let's say I have you know this is my client 1 this is my client 2 let's say this is my client 1000 in this approach what we need we need 1000 receptionist to serve 1000 client if you understand this is not really a scalable way like can you see that in a hotel we can have this kind of scenario and imagine that see like you know, if this client is just just doing and then client is not doing anything that means this receptionist is also ideal therefore it is not a good model you know like you know if this client is very aggressive or if this client is doing a lot of thing then it makes sense to have a one-to-one -one mapping with receptionist or if this client is doing a lot of things then okay we have one dedicated server process but the the downsides of this I this this approach is that we are going to have multiple you know one-to-one -one dedicated server process that means if you have 1000 client then I'm going to have 1000 dedicated server processes and processes in computer is uh, take some memory it also consumes CPUs and all this thing therefore this is not a scalable approach okay so therefore in our next video we are going to discuss about something called shared server approach okay so with this I am going to conclude this video and watch the next video to understand how shared server works.